right into there. We'll bring this one down there. All right, perfect. I like that one. Welcome everybody back to Just Playing Crazy. We are down in the lair and it is time to break down and review the special edition carbon DS12 from Jetty. You guys have all been asking, hey, Brendan, you've been Spectrum, Spectrum, Spectrum. Why all of a sudden the Jetty? I'm going to cover some of the um, reasons why I made the jump and a lot of the really cool features on this radio. First off, right out of the gate, this thing gets a super cool thumbs up. You can't go wrong here. Why did we choose to go this route? Let's dig right into it. Starting at just $600 will get you into the Jetty DS line. There's many options and levels to choose from. Find the one that best suits you and your needs, and you can start in that mid-600 range, and you can grow from there. They have reds, blues, yellows, grays, carbons, all different colors and flavors, if you will. I opted to get the more upgraded version. This is their special edition carbon. So this is a fully unlocked tool. And for $1,200, I thought it was the best bang for the buck because it gives you a fully unlocked radio, all the cool features that we're going to talk about. It gives you a telemetry R5 receiver included, this super cool aluminum carrying case that's customized for your radio except for the Just Plain Crazy stickers. Those are mine. All right, it gives you the lanyard and all the cool things that you can catch in the unboxing at the end. I want you guys to see firsthand a lot of the reasons why I really like this radio. Watch the boot up time in this. Here we go, gonna turn it on. There it is. Yes, bang, I'm in. You wanna change models? We're gonna go to menu. We're gonna go select model. We're gonna select there. Let's go over, let's go to the MiG-29. Bang, done. We're in and going. That's how long it takes to swap models on this thing. Shutting it off, really shut down. Yes, now we're off. Jetty. Although it is a DS-12 12 channel, it can actually be a four channel expander put in here and it will actually be a 16 channel radio. This thing has the metal gimbals, Hall Effect gimbals, and when you put your fingers on these and you fly a plane for the first time, the feel is just out of this world. The, the, the feedback, the response in the sticks is amazing, all right? It feels very intuitive like a lot of other radios um, ergonomically. You know, everything is right where it should be, but you have the full ability to customize any switch location on here you want. They want you to pull the back of this thing off and to change out the switches, cut into the time lapse. All right, now I had a dial here. I didn't want the dial there. I wanted a momentary button instead of a momentary switch. So I took the momentary switch out motor, motor, idle, and I put a motor, three motor, position motor, switch motor, right there that motor, I wanted. Kill. Now I have a momentary button because that's what I wanted there. If you want longer switches, shorter switches, spring-loaded switches, two position, three position, you can customize all of those things. You don't need to send it to anybody to do that. And the biggest thing with this radio, you want to do it, you can do it. You just have to learn how, and it's not super difficult. One, there's some great videos out there, and I'm going to throw a plug over to Harry Curzon. He's done an amazing video series, super helpful. You want help? I guarantee it's there. No problem. Over at the Jetty Duplex forums, hashtag Jetty Cult, right? I can guarantee you, you guys post something on there, responses like this, videos from the guys that, you know, program all this stuff. Anything you want, they're super responsive to help you to be successful. So um, the support behind this thing is absolutely amazing. Yes, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but it is not something that you can't overcome. Timers, you can set a timer any way you want a timer. Um, you can have 
all of your telemetry here in smaller boxes, bigger boxes. You can organize it in any form or fashion that you want. All right. Um, true black box telemetry. So what do I mean by that? If you have a plane that goes down, you can actually catalog and record everything that you had prior selected. So you can have a whole batch of telemetry if you want. You're not limited to one or two things. Antenna. So your first antenna and your second antenna, you can actually have... Um, it, it's on a 1 to 10 scale, so you can actually see the quality of the reception signals and know that, hey, this thing went in because I lost signal to one or two of those antennas, or I had a quality and transmission issue. That, that pit is there, if you will. Um, this is also a dual frequency radio. So this thing is not only 2.4, but this is actually a 900 megahertz dual band radio as well. So this radio, if it if you have the 900 megahertz module in there, which is basically a second receiver, this radio, if the 2.4 degrades, will instantaneously pop over to the 900 megahertz highway, and you'll never even miss a beat. There's a lot of benefits to all that telemetry involved into there. You can see that stuff. You can set up warnings to let you know that the signal's degraded to a certain point to tell you that the antennas are losing reception before you lose them. All right, should you have a crash, like I said, with the black box telemetry, you can save and you can graph all of that stuff. The coolest part about that is you can see, hey, did I lose uh, receiver voltage? Was it a signal issue? There's no more, boy, I don't know what happened. I think it was uh, a lockout or a brownout or something else. This thing has so many cool features as far as knowing information. And as long as your um, ESC is capable of transmitting it, you can get receiver temperature, you can get ESC temperature, milliamp usage. There's no more guessing on timers. You can actually know by the amount of capacity that you've used. Um, I can go literally on and on with this thing all day long, but just to show you guys some of the cool things that you can do with it if you want to, the volume um, all the way across all your models is set in one easy place. You can change profile from whatever color you want and you can change it that it stays per model. So every model comes up a different color. Here on the T6A Texan, that thing we had is a green, right? So we can leave that thing there. You can upload your pictures into it so you have a picture of your plane in there as well. Um, when you go into menus, you have model setups. So you can select what models you want that are in there. That's not a problem. A lot of this stuff is really the same in, in any radio. Um, servo setups are easy where you can actually come down through and select what servo it is that you want to mess with. Um, we can select like aileron in this case, come down, adjust your sub trim, your max and minimum throws, your max and minimum servo travels. You can reverse it. You can um, delay the response in the servo. So things like flaps, that's in there. Um, there's some really cool things in here. Let me go back um, into applications. Uh, so you gotta love this right here. We're gonna come down and we are going to find music. And there's music. And this is already loaded in there. So you want to listen to music while you fly. You're one of them guys. And there's an earphones port. So if you want to listen to Bach, man, you got it. Throw in a set of earphones and you could fly to Bach. So you can download whatever music you want in there. Um, we can come into games. You want to adjust your stick skills? Let's play some Tetris. So we'll come over to here. Oh, 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 into there. Okay, check that out. Yeah, right into there. We'll bring this one down there. All right, perfect. I like that one. Nice. Okay, so you can play Tetris on your, your radio here if you really wanted to. So that's kind of neat. We got chess and we got snake and some different games in there. Now we can go ahead and we'll go into microphone. So once we go into microphone, we can actually record on here. Hey, it's time to go just playing crazy. And you can set this up now for a switch. So when I turn the radio on, it can say it, or when I flip a switch. 
Hey, it's time to go just playing crazy. All right, so nothing you, you can have if you can hear this. Gear up. Gear down. And then you can have ones off of websites that are more uh, automated. Take off flaps. Landing flaps. Flaps up. So you can mix, you know, if that's what you want to do. So that's fine. That's cool in there. Um, as far as uh, you can go into Jetty Box and you can actually forward program your um, ESC right through here as well. You can look at values from your ESC. But one of the coolest features of this whole thing is black box telemetry that you can actually go back through and graph. So what I am going to do is I'm going to hook up the Texan and we're going to actually record some live data and then go back and look at it. Um, again, I'm going to get these switches. We're going to put those away. And then there's the toolkit. You have to buy the little uh, thing to take off the knobs there, but it comes with the rest of the Allen wrenches for the back. So let's get this thing plugged in. So now we got our Texan powered up. You can see we got the old blinky blinky going. We got our timer there set to start on the throttle stick. You can see that we have um, amperage draw. We have actual battery capacity used, which is set about 80% for an alarm. So uh, about 80% used up, 20% left. I know it's time to come in and land. I got my BEC voltage displayed. We'll have uh, motor RPM and then temperature, but I have a lot of stuff on the backside set that I can go back and look through that. And that's going to be in that graphing display. So let's go ahead and get this thing fired up and get it set up so you guys can actually see it. Motor throttle active. Motor idle speed. So there you can see that. And we're just going to put you guys down here, hopefully, where you could see the radio. And we're just going to take it up for a little bit and give it a couple short bursts while I hold on to the plane. One more. Motor throttle active. Motor throttle kill. All right, now we're going to go ahead and disconnect the plane. So the plane is no longer active. We're going to stop and we're going to clear that telemetry data. And now we're actually going to come back into our graphing display. I'm going to select my log file for today's date. There's my Texan 2. And then I have three PIDs down here that I can select. So I can look at battery voltage, battery amperage, and then I have my throttle control. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the graph on all of those right now. We can go ahead and fast forward through it or behind it. We can make the graph bigger or smaller. We can zoom in. And now you can look at those chart references and I will go ahead and scroll right through those. So what's being displayed right now is my battery voltage. And I can actually look at those peaks right there. So that voltage dropped to 31.7 under load from 33. So I can actually tell what my batteries are doing and how they're taking that extreme load that I just put on them. And we can cycle back through here and that was pulling a max of 65 amps, and that was under full wide open. And now I look at my throttle control and cross-reference that and see that that was up at 100%. So I know everything in here I need to know to determine power system setups. Do I want to go with a different prop? And did it actually change amperage, voltage? What happened to my battery uh, under that load? And now you can actually calculate flight times and things like that. So we can go back 
and I will go ahead and pull up um, a different PID. So let's just say I want to take out that throttle and I want to look at that antenna, antenna one. And now I can actually go through and I'll select that first antenna and a nine is the highest rating for it. And it looks like my radio is going to start to die here on me. But that antenna stayed at a nine all the way across. So I know that that antenna position, as far as where it was during my flight, was perfectly fine. But so much cool data in here, it's not even funny. Um, some of the neatest stuff is right there. But again, you can go on and on and on with this thing. Uh, there's so many cool features to the feel and fit. The downside is compared to the DS2416, this does have a, a plastic case to it. Um, the plastic case makes the whole radio lighter, which to me I like. It's a little heavier than a Spectrum DX9, but it's not quite as heavy as the DS24. The downside to me was they don't have foam or rubber pads on the side, so I actually just took some foam padding from Walmart and cut that out and put that there. So that fixed that for a couple bucks. But you can buy this whole radio set up from Aeropanda, Esprit Models. Um, you can check them out. The links will be down in the description below for those guys. But literally, this thing comes completely, completely unlocked because Jetty, you, you pay for different modules to do different things. This radio, fully unlocked, like 1200 bucks, plus it comes with an aluminum case, comes with the lanyard, comes with the tools to take the back of the radio apart so you can change out your switches, comes with a five channel receiver, ready to go. So there is nothing that you can't do with this thing if you can imagine it. So you want um, to run GPS, uh, you can do that. If you want what they call assist or gyro receivers, there's no more difficulty in programming these or trying to figure them out or trying to find them. They have you set up and it's not today's model out tomorrow, out the next day. I'm telling you, this stuff has been consistent and a fabulous experience for me across the board. And I didn't want to do a video on this stuff right away. I wanted to play around with it through a couple models, get some flights under and give you a little bit more of a um, true, honest review of the product. So with that being said, I'm sure there's something I missed. If you have any questions, although I am not an expert on this, not anywhere close, I can give you a very beginner's perspective, which I think is what everybody is going to be looking for. Uh, feel free to comment down below, ask your questions, and I'll try and answer them. If not, I'll send you to a place that has the answers. But um, we'll cut to the video here at the end, which is going to be the unboxing for you guys. I hope you liked it. If you like it, like it, smash that button for me. If you didn't like it, you know the deal. Hit the thumbs down button twice, like, share, subscribe, all those cool things. Get over to like one of the sites like Aero Panda and check out a uh, Jetty radio. All right, guys. So with that being said, you're just playing crazy for watching and hanging out with me. Appreciate it. Happy flights. Peace out. This thing, guys, has come right from aeropanda.com. And, uh, Wanting to take full advantage of my Tribunus ESC on this CARF, all right? I want to make sure that I can read all the telemetry and spectrum isn't going to give it to me. So with that being said, Jetty and this DS-12 offer true black box data as well as the ability to move switches around anywhere on the radio. They encourage you to switch things up the way that you want them and make the radio your own. I am not stuck with what the manufacturer wants. And I've had a lot of good success with Spectrum over the years. But uh, special planes require special equipment. Very well packaged. This ships, even though that it was bought out of Czech Republic, ships out of Florida. Wait until you see this. DS-12 Special Edition. Lots of foam to protect things. Comes in a super nice case. Holy cow, look at that. That is, initial impression is gorgeous. 
What a gorgeous case that is. Nice aluminum finish on there. Looks like it's got locks on the latches. And guys, there she is. So initial thoughts, it looks like maybe, and this is, I know nothing about Jetty. Other than the fact that it was highly recommended by my buddy Ronnie. And uh, I got the fly on his DS24. And I absolutely loved it. They give you a note. It says, congratulations, you have purchased one of the best transmitters in the world. As you know, Jetty is continuously adding features and improvements that are transmitters. To get the most from your new transmitter, you should regularly check for software. So this is, uh, it looks like an update cable for the radio. But what I fell in love with, with this radio, was simply the fact of the way the sticks felt the gimbals the hull effects but there was feedback to these where they actually felt solid now this is the nice part about the ds12 it's a lighter transmitter case like i like i didn't like the super heavy aluminum case um, but this one is fully unlocked and as far as um, switches and knobs i also got two switches because you can pop these knobs out they fully allow you to do that I could put switches in the place and and um, two position, three position, whatever I want them to be, shorts, longs, and the radio will recognize that I move those um, and allow for that. Full voice programming, full bl uh, black box data out of this thing, um, and then the ability to graph all of it. So when it comes down to looking at milliamp draw, looking at current draw, motor temperature, I can look at all of those things with this radio. So... Um, can't wait to really dig into it. Super excited. Looks like some plastic here in the back. The owner's manual. But a um, little on the lighter side, just like I like. That is perfect. So here is, uh, looks like the charge cord for it. Uh, ferrite ring for probably over the cord, I would assume. We got keys for the case. Got ourselves a nice jetty neck lanyard there, which we can sport. And then uh, there is our uh, Rex 5 receiver that it comes with. So um, 2.4 spread spectrum. And this also has the ability to communicate on the 900 megahertz frequency also. And will do instant hopping. So if it ever loses signal out of here it will instantly as long as you have the 900 enabled it'll flip right over to the 900 and give you that redundancy so the only reason you're ever going to have a loss of communication is simply because you didn't set the plane up right and you had equipment failure um, from that perspective but it ain't coming out of this so this is the special edition ds12 carbon and it is a plastic case this is not their aluminum case model so it is light like i like but the gimbals, the tension, the feedback, it feels good. There's resistance there. Not just like, like you're just flinging around the regular sticks. And they are aluminum, aluminum gimbals. They feel incredible. But nice and light. I like that. I like that. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, this is leading to big things. I can't wait to get this Carf build started. I'm super excited. And just to see what else here is in this bag. They sell you the tool to replace the switches, so I bought that. And here are your switches with the ribbon cables. So the ribbon cables literally plug into these, and then you can plug them right into the radio. So they're not playing around. They want you to set this thing up the way that you want it. And I got two of those switch assemblies. So there is no more sending the thing back in for um, repair. And then, as always, you got to get hooked up with the merch. So we got ourselves an Aero Panda shirt, an Aero Panda sticker. So... Um, absolutely love it, love it, love it. Thanks for joining me, guys. Check them out, aeropanda.com.